Hey, what's up guys, JC? I'm back by popular demand. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you guys watched my dance off yesterday. So, if you want some business, if you wanna, how they say it nowadays, if you wanna fade, let me know. I'll put on my dance shoes and we can battle it out in the park. <laughs> it's so, it's so, it's so cool, man, to think about those memories and everything before, like, all the madness started and, and just to think, even just how I used to dress. I look back and I, I wish I would have had pictures, you know. As you can see, I'm bringing back the pushback. <laughs> you know, I used to wear this cut-off jersey, football jersey, you know, with the holes, and it, it would show my stomach. <laughs> and these short, white shorts with the socks with the stripes on it and i used to think i was cool as hell my converse you know what i mean you know i go way back to the days man when on 26th street that little flea market wasn't there it used to be a sighted and go blocks was on christiana you know way back in the day five stars was right there you know man a lot of good memories man but i'm gonna share a part of my story today that ties into the rest of you know mexico texas and all that stuff and uh yeah let's get into this let's get into this story america has always been fascinated with the mob kingpins crime it's in movies shows history and it's become culture crime and scandal from inmates in alcatraz to john Gotti and al capone but the united states has its own share of homegrown drug kingpins mob bosses and gangsters this is Gangsters of America. Hey, what's up? My name is JC. I am Wrong the Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell. You don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, you already know. Grab the keys, gas it up. Suanza la suburban. Let's get the show on the road. All right, guys. So when I got released from federal prison in El Paso, La Tuna, I got picked up by the cops or whatever you want to call them, Texas Rangers. They took me to the El Paso County Jail and then to the Annex. Then from there they released me, I got on the bus and if you guys haven't seen that video, I'll put it in the, in the uh, cards and, and you can watch that video, but it was a whole, you know, whole ride. <laughs> My life has been a pretty, pretty interesting life, I must say. Once I got to Chicago, I had to turn myself in course you know I didn't do it right away but I did it turned myself in ended up going to court at the time one of my oldest daughter that right now is 23 was a baby and she was at the courtroom for my sentencing I was actually wanted for a shooting case it was unlawful use of a weapon discharge of a weapon fell in possession of a weapon fleeing the scene <laughs> I got into a little shooting on 59th and Sawyer and there was some cops parked on 59th and Kedzie at the shopping center and started giving chase um, I got caught tried to toss the gun but I got caught went to prison anyways bonded out but ended up going on the run and you know ended up in Mexico a couple of years later you know I was, I was still wanted <laughs> go figure right <laughs> so you know I get to court and I gotta say man I gotta say with every story that goes by and I tell you guys I have to say that God has always been on my side this is why I believe that I have a purpose this is why I believe that I have a plan and this is why I believe I'm still here to this day and doing this what I'm doing now. I would have never thought that I was going to be doing videos and sharing a positive message and stuff. I was one of the most knucklehead guys out there you could possibly think of. And, and that's what makes this so, you know, uh, like humbling because guys that know me from my past see me and they can't, they can't believe it. So it's like... That has to be a catch now that I think about all the judges that I've been in my life. And, and you know, the more stories I go through, the, the more I'll share it and let you guys pretty much, you know, live that experience with me. So I go to court, 
The judge, you know, sees that I was in Mexico for a amount of years, everything. They were actually trying to give me for that shooting, they were trying to give me 10 years. And the judge seen my daughter there, the judge seen me. I mean, I was still a kid. I was in my 20s, but I, I still looked like a kid. And I, I gotta honestly say that something touched her heart and, and she felt bad as she ran my time concurrent with my Mexican time and with the time I was in the county and all that stuff and pretty much I ended up with a sweet deal so you know when they run your time concurrent every day that you did count it so pretty much I had done all my time so pretty much what was gonna happen I was gonna get shipped to Joliet and then shipped to the yard I was going to and getting dressed in and dressed out pretty much I was gonna have to do like 90 days and it was gonna be it. So, I get sentenced, I get sentenced, and you know, she gives me uh, 10 minutes with my daughter in the chambers. So I'm crying, holding my daughter, the judge walks in, and she's like, hey, I recommend it, you go to a, a very nice place where you won't get into no trouble, hopefully you'll get your life together. Back in the day, if you're from Chicago, and you've been to this yard, you know what I mean. This yard is, is called East Moline, but they call it Sweet Moline. You get to rock around with your own clothes from the street, your jewelry, I mean, they had pizza ovens there, it was open movement, it was a very, very sweet, sweet yard. Uh, I wanna say is minimum security. I don't know how I got sent to a minimum security because I still had a big, federal hold on me because of being freshly out the feds but I got sent there well there was a catch to that <laughs> it was a sweet yard man easy easy to get shit in easy to I mean it just felt like you were on the streets I rem I remember a couple of uh, stand-up dudes that were there with me local from the Harrison gents OG if you see this dog I miss you, you were always a good influence, always a good dude man, always looked out. He was always on the handball court. My boy Bonks from the SDs was there. All we did was play handball all day and just kick it on the yard. That's all we did is smoke joints. <laughs> well, all that came to an end one day when two black trucks pulled in because the entrance that's how sweet that yard was. It looked like a college, like a college uh, campus. Two black SUVs roll in right where you walk in where the bus leaves you, right? You could see everything from the dorms, the yard, everything. It's not a big yard. They roll in and I'm on the handball court, right? And the, uh, f the, f the there was a f uh, Latin folks that worked the front desk. He, he comes walking up and he's like, hey, so, the U.S. Marshals are here for you. And I was like, what? And I was like, what do you mean the U.S. Marshals are here? He's like, they're here for you. And I felt like I was having a flashback from La Tuna and a flashback from the county jail in El Paso, you know what I mean? So I was like, all right, so yeah, here they come. You see them with their vests on, everything. They cuff me up right on the yard and walk me out. Put me in the truck and we're, we're just flying down the highway and you know they're taking me to the big federal building in downtown Chicago the whole way there I'm asking these dudes like what, what the fuck's going on like in my head I'm thinking that another federal case came up and they brought me up on charges because you know you guys know how it is sometimes you actually don't get to leave because they call you out on some other stuff and they pick you up and you never make it you know, so in my head, I'm thinking, man, you know, was it this, was it that? And in my head, I'm just going crazy, and I'm like, shit, like, what, what's going on? So they have me in the uh, in the building in downtown, right? And I get in front of the judge, and the judge is just, like, going through the paperwork, like, page after page after page. And I was like, Your Honor, can, you know, can I speak? And he was like, you know, be quiet. You'll have your, your, your time right now. When he said that, I started shitting in my pants. 
because I thought they had picked me up on, on some some other stuff. Um, he's like, I don't understand. He has no, he was talking to a secretary. He has no new cases. What, what's what's going on? So then the judge was like, Mr. Omano, do you mind explaining what's going on? I was like, Well, judge, this is what happened. I was in federal custody. I got extradited from Mexico. I ended up in Latuna. I had to give him the whole spill of everything, step by step. I was wanted in Illinois because of this, this, this. They sentenced me to this. They ran a concurrent. And he was baffled about the shit show that happened because pretty much they lost track of me. They thought that I was like on the run. They thought that I had caught a new case. It, it was like a shit show, right? And he was pissed. He was more pissed at them because he was like, what the fuck is this kid doing here then? What is he doing here? Why was he on this yard? Because I wasn't supposed to be on a low minimum security yard because of my federal hold. I should have been in a max or medium. Well, <laughs> story of my fucking life, I swear to God. So they keep me in holding. I'm there for, I don't know, I, I wanna say three, four weeks maybe. They finally finalize everything. They get everything together and the marshals come back and get me. And they're like, all right, we're gonna take you back. And I was like, all right, so where am I going now? You're going back to your yard in East Moline. So I was like, cool, because that's where all my stuff was at. Little did I know that that little incident, that little show, that little everything, the marshals coming to get me, all that stuff would set me up for later doing really big business in Terratown. You know, I started messing with a lot of the GDs. I started messing with a lot of the Vice Lords. There was these GDs that I used to mess with. They were right off of Western and 70 something. It was like a dead end street. I can't remember the uh, name of the street, but it was right off of Western. It was just a dead end street. It was like perfect for, you know, in Chicago, it's really, really common to just be out on the street selling pretty much on the corner. You know what I mean? Like you roll up uh, and, and you get whatever you need. You buy, boom, you leave. And, and it's just, it's, it's, it's common, it's normal. Um, everything, you can find anything, weed, crack, heroin, I mean, you name it. And I started messing with these uh, uh, GDs in Terratown, big, big, big time. That's where I started making a lot of money. But, you know, when they took me back to the yard, everybody was calling me the plug. I didn't know what the plug meant back then. <laughs> you know, they were like, not just anybody gets taken off the yard by the marshals like that. <laughs> so everybody was calling me the plug. Even when I got back, I ended up getting moved into this uh, unit where all the like old, old like all the uh, workers were at, and they had like private cubicles. And it, it was because you know a lot of the uh, Latin folks and, and and some of the you know BDs GDs were in there and. I mean, let's let's be honest. They they were they were trying to like set up something so when I got out, and yeah, I mean it, it ended up happening. Yeah, but it, it was just crazy the the way everybody started treating me when I went back. You know, I was eating free. They used we they used to sell the Giorno pizzas there, and they had the pizza ovens, so they would cook them like it, they tasted really really good, and. I mean, that last month that I did there was the sweetest month that I ever did. Pretty much pizza, smoking weed, playing handball, free this, free that. You know, everybody wanted to be friends with me. <laughs> but it set up pretty much the stage for State Street, Terratown, I mean, Halstead, I mean, you name it. It set up the street for me when I got out and I started making the really big moves. But. It wasn't all sweet. It, it came some at a cost, and like I told you guys before, I've been tied up twice, robbed twice, at gunpoint and everything, and it was, it was a very scary, scary time. Remember, with more money comes more problems, and especially in that, in that line of work, you have to constantly, constantly be on the lookout with eyes behind your head.
because everybody wants to get you. I've told you guys in the past, my best friend robbed me, my own crew wanted to kill me. It was disaster. You couldn't pay me to go back to having all that money and having all those problems with it. This is why I share the stories, to get a couple laughs so you could learn, not do the dumb shit that I did and at the end of the day pretty much tell you that it wasn't worth it. Me having all that money in my, in my secret compartment closet in my house, driving my Beamers, having the restaurant, all that stuff was not worth it and you could not pay me to go back. No. I rather, you heard the little, the little Wayne song where he says I'd rather be slanging flowers than being sharing showers with other dudes? Yes. I would rather work at McDonald's than have to go through that life again. My name's JC. I am Ron Strong. This is my story, my shenanigans. Hey, it is what it is, guys. Don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, if you live easy, life is hard. But if you live hard, life can be easy. Stay sober, stay out of jail. Educate yourself. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.